All right, guys, so today's finally the day. Onefinity delivered my Revolution. This is gonna go as an attachment to my original Journeyman. I have a 48 by 32 cutting area. In this box, there is the Revolution and the kit for the QCW frame that I can mount this directly to the table. Today we're doing an unboxing and then I'm gonna go ahead and get it set up. It looks like it got a little bit beat up in the mail, so hopefully everything in there is A-OK. -okay. Let's check it out. The box itself, about 66 and a half inches long. Uh, 10 inches deep and 13 and a half inches tall. That's what I'm talking about. I love a nice box from Onefinity. This is gonna be great. I'm just gonna pull these out one by one and lay them out and then we'll take a look at them. Okay. It's a little heavier than I expected. Get out of here. If you think you're gonna move anytime soon, I would recommend keeping that box. All right, so I'm gonna check these little boxes out first before busting that out of its packaging. power cable. Here is the controller. Cables for the controller. Looks like these are our M2 cables. This looks like more mounting hardware. I think this is the key for the chuck. These blocks are likely for the rails. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take everything out so that way we're ready for installation. And in today's installation, I will be using Onefinity's YouTube video and referencing that throughout the entire installation to make sure I don't get this wrong. Okay, so this is it. We are now fully unboxed. I have the main assembly there, all of the parts, and then the, uh, the parts that mount this to the QCW frame as well. So the next thing we're gonna do is pull up the Onefinity install video and we'll go step by step. So I have a original Journeyman machine with a BuildBotics controller. So there's two different videos up on YouTube. If you have the Elite, just make sure you're choosing the right video for that. My probe wire here was already connected to the machine, so I had to pull that out of there for the layout. Okay, so first thing I gotta do is install these risers for the X-Rail. It's gonna be a five millimeter hex key to get the bolts out and then we're just going to screw them right back down on top of this. This shouldn't cause any drama with your tilt configuration because the riser just adds height. I'm going to add the riser on the other side, make sure it's flush and then install the eight new bolts that came with the kit. You'll notice a pretty significant height difference between the old bolt and the new bolt, so you're not going to want to reuse these. Okay, so the next thing I got to do is adjust my Z slider here, the maximum amount of clearance, so I'm going to raise this by using the lowest set of holes to resecure it back. I'm going to go ahead and remove my router because it's very much in my way right now. Gonna go ahead and drop this back in here now. Okay, so this is the attachment that's gonna screw onto my QCW rail. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this right now. It's the second bolt, and then it's just gonna go, you're just gonna use the same bolt, screw it right back in.
Now this mounting piece goes on the right side, very last bolt this time. I'm gonna go ahead and install these spacer blocks now, the short one on the right side and the longer one on the near side. Looks like it's gonna be a two on that one. These spacers right here go right in the middle. Okay, so now that we have those installed, we can go ahead and pop these right in. Okay, perfect fit. And then these two knobs here secure those in place. The two cables that you're gonna use for M1 motor and M2 motor are gonna come from the back of the control box that are already plugged in. So you're just gonna take them out of the, the control box and plug them in to the new control box. This is gonna go to M2 motor and M1 motor. And now I'm just gonna sit this here. So I'm pretty sure what's gonna happen next is we're gonna plug this back into the box. I do recommend when you're messing around with these connectors to be really careful. Some of these are really fragile and you can knock the pins loose. I've had some trouble in the past with that. M2 and M1 from Control will plug into the back of the Onefinity control box. I'm gonna need to set up a better system for taking this down and putting it up and taking it down and putting it up again. This could get frustrating. Going to go ahead and connect the power source now and plug in the Onefinity rotary to the front of the box. So it looks like that's all the hardware that it takes for the installation video. Um, need to do a little bit of extra research and figure out what these pieces are for. I'll just set them to the side for now. Tool for tightening and loosening and getting this secured to the stock. And then this is going to be the touch probe. So I'll just set all the rest of this stuff to the side while I run a test here. So for testing purposes, I'm going to go ahead and add this 3 by 3 by 12 uh, piece of cherry to the chuck. So in order to do this, I need to first screw this attachment onto the end of the piece. I'm going to be using four small screws for this. So basically this end is gonna go into this end and then this end will tighten up on this end. Yeah, it seems pretty secure. I'm going to go ahead and power on both the Revolution and the Onefinity Journeyman. So on the new version of the Onefinity software, you have this rotary button here. Um, so what the Onefinity setup video recommends is that you hit the emergency stop first. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and switch it over into rot rotary mode here. The rotary box is on. I'm gonna go ahead and touch on yes. So it looks like we have these probe rotary buttons showed up down here on the bottom row. So that's a good sign. And then I'm gonna go ahead and trigger this back. And we're back in rotary mode. So this is really cool. Your left and right joystick now controls the rotary, left and right. So that's awesome. Spins pretty fast too. So cool. So the probing process for this is pretty much the same as the, as the other method. You're just gonna attach this to the collet and then your, your X and Y uh, zeroing block is actually right here attached to the rotary. So we're just gonna hover the bit and then we're gonna go ahead and hit probe rotary, probe X, Y, Z. It's probing for Z right now. Probing for X. OK, 
of my first error. So I reached out to support about the error I was getting with the XYZ probing, and it turns out that I needed to probe Z and then go back and probe XYZ again. So they're saying it's a bug in the firmware, but if that's happening to you, go ahead and probe Z first and then probe X, Y, and Z, and that should take care of it. All right, so overall, this was pretty easy to set up. Thanks to Onefinity for providing that setup video on YouTube. That was very helpful. This looks like it's gonna be really cool, and I look forward to producing some more videos for you guys using this Onefinity revolution here. The next project you see me doing will be a rotary project. It looks like it's gonna be a good time.